like to do is show you guys how to find uh, the slant asymptotes. All right. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Not just asymptotes. Let's find the vertical and let's find the horizontal. Vertical, horizontal, and slant. Okay. So the first thing uh, I like to start with the vertical. And when finding the vertical asymptotes, all right, what we need to do is we need to find out what values are not going to be true for x, right? Because vertical, if you're going to think of like uh, my graph here, vertical are going to be vertical lines. So we're going to have x values that our graph are going to approach, but they're never going to touch or ever going to cross. So therefore, we have to find certain x values that are not a part of our function. So when you're dealing with a rational function, we know that if we find values that make the bottom zero, those cannot be a part of our function because you cannot divide by zero. So to find those values that make our bottom polynomial zero, I need to set our bottom polynomial equal to zero. Then when I solve, I get one equals x squared. When I take the square root, I get x equals plus or minus one. Therefore, I have two vertical asymptotes. And you know what? Let's do a little sketch graph here so we can see. So therefore, I have, we're going to have negative 1 and at 1. Phoenix, Christ, please. All right, so those are two little asymptotes that my graph is never going to touch. It's just going to keep on approaching it. Keep on approaching it without bound, we like to say. When checking out my horizontal, there's three rules, and I'll try to say them as slowly as possible because I've made a couple videos on this and I don't want to write them down again. So if you want me to see what they're written down, check out some of my other videos on uh, asymptotes. But for horizontal, we need to look at the degrees of your leading term. When I look at the degrees of the leading term, if your, if your degree of your top term or top polynomial is less than your degree of your bottom polynomial, then your horizontal is asymptote is when y equals zero. If these two degrees were equal to each other, then you need to take the coefficient of each of those leading terms and divide them, and that's what y would equal as your horizontal asymptote. In this case, though, when you have your degree on your a polynomial is larger than a degree on the bottom polynomial, you do not have a horizontal asymptote. What you have is what we call a slant asymptote. And to find a slant asymptote, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use long division. And the reason why we want to use long division is because um, one thing, or when we're doing synthetic division, remember, it always had to be in the form of a factor, right? And you had to use that zero to do this. Well, here we don't have a factor. You know, we're not looking for factors or zeros. So synth Long division is going to give us our quickest method and, and uh, area to find our horizontal asymptote. So let's do long division. Remember, you take your first term, divide it into, uh, I'm sorry, actually, I forgot here. When doing long division of this sort, we need to make sure every term is created. So I don't have a 0x, so I need to create one. Okay. Notice that my divisor is x squared minus 1. Well, to finish up this problem, I gotta make sure that every single x term is is, um, is represented when dividing. So x squared goes into x cubed x times. x squared times x cubed, or x squared is x cubed. Alright? x times uh, 0x is still gonna give me my 0x squared. And x times negative 1 is gonna give me a negative 1x. Obviously, I have nothing left over here to bring down. Um, so therefore, what you do is, uh, so I'll have 0, right? So 0 minus, um, so that was cancel out. That's 0. 0 minus a negative 1 would be a positive x. So I'll have x over x squared minus 1. So we're not concerned about the remainder, though. All right? We don't care about the remainder. All we're concerned about is what our divisor is without the remainder. So therefore, my horizontal asymptote is going to be this x line, which looks like that. So therefore, this is another line that my graph is going to approach, and but it's not going to cross it or it's not going to uh, 
It's not going to cross it, nor will it touch it. So without, you know, without doing a table of values or without looking graph calculator, we won't know what the graph looks like, but you can at least see where the graph is not going to touch and it will approach. And that, excuse me, that's how you find your horizontal slant and vertical asymptotes.